In this video, we want to see how to create a DAX formula for a half year running total. And since this is DAX, we can do it in Power BI Desktop or Excel Power Pivot. Below the video, you can download the Excel file or the Power BI Desktop file. Now, last video 1560, we saw how to create half year running totals with the standard pivot tables. When you download this file, this is the finished Power Pivot pivot table with a DAX formula with a running total by half year increments. Now, since DAX can be done in either Excel Power Pivot or Power BI Desktop, I'm going to jump over to Power BI Desktop and create the DAX formulas here. I already have in report view year and month and total sales. Over in relationships, we can see we have our date dimension table, our relationship, and our fact table. The first thing we need to do is go to data or table view. Make sure that the date table is selected. We need to add an extra date attribute column that indicates for each possible day whether it's the first part or the second part of the year first part would be month number 1 to 6, or is it the second part, 7 to 12? Up here in Modeling, I'm going to click New Column. I'm going to call it something like Year Part. The first part of our label will list the actual year. And then I need to join it with a dash and double quotes. I need to join it to either 1 for the first part of the year or 2 for the second part of the year. In parentheses, I'm going to run a logical test which looks at the D date month number. Hey, are you greater than 6? If it's greater than 6, that's the second half of the year, and that gets a true. 6, close parentheses. Because I want a 1 and a 2, when it comes out false, the first part of the year, I'm going to add 1. When it comes out true, then 1 plus 1 will give us 2. Now, something interesting about DAX here, that is the same as an Excel worksheet we're allowed to mix data type Boolean and data type number. If we were in Power Query, then we wouldn't be able to do that. But when I hit Enter, that gives me exactly what we want. We can see as soon as it gets to July or later, it's got the actual year and the second part. Now, you may want to amend this formula to say something different. I did it this way because it will automatically sort correctly. The next DAX formula we need to do over in Report View. I have my matrix selected over in D date. We take year part, and I'm going to drag it very carefully into rows between months and year. Now, the total works just fine. We get subtotals and totals for the full year. And the way a measure like total sales works is for each row in this matrix, filter context determines just the correct rows for calculating total sales. Now, how does filter context work? If we look, for example, at this row in our matrix, there's the measure. It's a simple measure sum. There's the name of the fact table and the column. Underneath, behind the scenes, when the measure gets to this row, this April condition flows into the measure. The date table is filtered down to just the dates for April 2019. Those dates, or that filter, flow across the relationship and filter the fact table down to just the days for April 2019. And then the measure makes its calculation. The reason it's so important to explicitly understand how filter context works is because in our running total formula, we're going to have to change that automatic filter context. That means instead of for this row having our measure see just the days for April, we needed to see all of the days for April all the way back to the beginning of the year. And guess what? When we get down to this row, August 2019, that means somehow we change the filter context so our measure only sees last day of August all the way back to the 1st of July. With the matrix selected, I select the fact table, modeling, new measure. We'll call it something like half year running total equal sign. Now we need to use that measure, but how do we change the filter context? with the calculate function. I type the letter C, tab. Expression, square bracket, there's our measure, tab, comma. Now we need to provide in filter a valid list of dates. 
Remember, in April 2019, in the filter argument, I need the end of April all the way back to January. And then calculate will facilitate filtering the fact table. Well, we can provide a valid list of dates with the filter function. Table argument, that's the table we want to filter. Well, we're dealing with the date table. Now, if I just put DD date, that will only see the dates for April. So we need to remove all the filters from that date table. And the way we do that is with the all function. That's a table function that removes the filters. So now sitting in the first argument of filter is every single date in the D date table, comma. Filter expression, that's the second argument of filter. And it will allow us to filter a column in the D date table. Now this column right here is pointing to all of the dates in the D date. And we ask the question, hey, how many of you are less than or equal to? And now we need to get the max date from the external filter context. So DD, there it is, date. That column right there is working off of all. But the date column here inside of max will automatically see the filter context. And so what's the max date in April? The end of the month. Close parentheses, close parentheses. That whole filter right there is providing calculate with every single day from January 1st to the end of April. Now filter right now, if we enter it and we're going to do that, that will get the running total all the way down to the grand total. So let's see how this works. At the end, close parentheses and enter. I'm going to add some number formatting. Over here, we'll check. And sure enough, it's doing a running total all the way down. Because in August, right there, the full valid list is the end of August all the way back to the very first date in the date table. We accomplished half of our goal. We used filter to change the filter context. But now we need to add, I'm going to backspace. We have filter one, but inside calculate, we can have as many filters as we want, and it will be run as an AND logical test. So comma. And the filter we want to add is please only look at the dates for any half year period. Now, the way we can grab the half year period from whatever the filter context is, is to use the values function. And if I down arrow to year part, tab, close parentheses, values job is just to look as it copies down at the filter context. Right here, it sees 2019-1. Right here, 2019-1. But as soon as it gets down to here, for example, August, now it will see 2019-2. Values is, in essence, adding this back in. So now the date table will only have from the end of August back to whatever the first date is for 2019-2, which is July 1st. Another way to think of this is that all removed every filter on the D date, values added one back in. So filter 2, that's our second filter for calculate when I hit Enter. Now we get exactly what we want. Running total, and then it starts over. August right there, that's the total only for all of August and July. Now we might not want to show the totals and subtotals, given that we already have this number over in the total sales column. Well, the way we're going to change the formula is we're going to ask, is the month column filtered? So up in the formula bar, I'm going to use the if function, and then is filtered, and down to month tab. Right now, is filter will say true, 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 false, true, 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 false. All these totals will be false because there's more than one month. Now let's comma. That's our formula we want to run. And if we leave the third argument out, it will put a blank, which is exactly what we want. Close parentheses and Enter. And there we have our half year running total. And that formula will work in Power BI Desktop and over in Excel Power Pivot. Now if we notice up in the formula bar, as I built this formula, I built it linearly. Now as I filmed the video, it sort of made sense because I built the formula from the inside out. But we can format this formula to make it easier to understand. We'll expand the formula bar. Up in the formula bar, before if, I'm going to backspace and we'll use Shift Enter. Tab. The if has two arguments, Shift Enter. 
Second argument, shift enter. Inside of calculate, that's the measure where we're trying to add different filters. That's the second argument of calculate. That's one valid list of dates. That's a second valid list of date attributes. Now I'm going to come to the end, backspace, backspace, shift enter. And the convention is when we close off a function, we'll put close parentheses. Close parentheses. The advantage to format like this is we can clearly see inside of if there's one, two different arguments. Is filtered, that's the logical test. And then our formula. Calculate takes the measure, one, two filters. And that's the new filter context for total sales. All right, that was a little bit of fun with half year running totals with our DAX measure. And over in table view, our DAX calculated column.